Let's make the environment of Predator Isle. The environment is more than just a backdrop. It plays a pivotal role in the game. It encourages exploration and rewards curiosity with hidden resources and secrets scattered throughout its stunning landscapes. Players must adapt to its changing conditions, day and night- Alright, I'm gonna stop reading that ChatGPT stuff and get to the point. Our game needs a fancy environment because right now it looks pathetic. <laughs> Let's start with terrain. Now how exactly is one going to make a terrain in the Go Prancer game engine? Alright, I have a plan. Step 1. Download Unreal Engine. Step 2. Make terrain and export it as an OBJ. Step 3. After you finish exporting, realize that there was a Godot terrain plugin you could have used the whole time. So slam your head on a table. Step 4. Export the Unreal terrain as a high map and port it to the Go Prancer terrain plugin. Alright, that was super easy. But what we need now is biomes. Now I can just use this super simple tool to paint the island. But what's the fun in that? So I spent the last 6 hours creating a script that allows you to walk around the island in real time and paint the island with a paintbrush. But I don't want to suffer alone. I want my friend to suffer and scream like I will. So I added our famous top secret multiplayer node into the script and the painting feature is now multiplayer. Yo bro, what's poppin'? Nothing much. I just spent the last 8 hours coding a painting system and I'm gonna need your help with it. Okay, let's do it. Alright bro, you ready to paint this island? Absolutely. freaking lootly <laughs> and after a week of painting the island, we finally got it done. Now you may be wondering why on earth I made us suffer when I could have just painted it like a normal human being in 20 minutes. Well, the answer is simple. I did it for my viewers. So like and subscribe! But the main reason I did it is because I want my friend to suffer. So now that we have biomes on the island, we need a biome detection system to tell which biome each character is in. Luckily, there is a get texture ID at position function for the terrain plugin. So I created a terrain biome class that had a texture ID. Every so often, the system gets the texture ID that each character is standing on, checks all the biomes for which has a matching texture ID. If the character is in a different biome than they were before, then it will just switch their current biome to it. Otherwise, it'll leave it the same. And of course, it doesn't work. Because why would it? So now I've got to spend half an hour debugging the mess I just made. After some intense trial and error, and a few breaks to scream into the void, the code finally works. Now that we finished biome detection, it's time to work on the temperature system. This may be hard to comprehend, but basically, if you're in a cold biome, it should be cold, and if you're in a hot biome, it should be hot. Let me think how I'm gonna do this. Wait, I think I have an idea. Basically, we have a temperature value, and what I can do is set the temperature to an extremely high amount, like 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit Celsius Kelvin, which will make the island super hot and moist. Next, I'm going to introduce a mechanical thermometer, which will be extremely important for making the temperature system work. It displays the current temperature, but here's the twist. If I put a physical cap on the thermometer, so it can't go past a certain point, the temperature won't be able to exceed that limit. For example, if I stop the thermometer at 0 degrees, the island which is supposed to be super hot can't be hot because the thermometer is limited at 0 degrees. So therefore, the island will be 0 degrees. This effect works in real life too. If I grab a clock and stop the hour and minute hand from moving, time will stop too. Or if I turn the hands backwards, time will move backwards. Or if I turn the hands backwards, time will move backwards. Or if I turn the hands- Can we not do this? Do what? This- this whole thing, just stop. I have no idea what you're talking about, I'm just- I'm just trying to make a video here. Alright, you know what? Give me that thing. I don't know what that was about, but anyways, this concept is the way that time machines work in real life. It has something to do with Einstein Newton's theory of internal combustion or something, but I won't get too deep into that in this video. But then I woke up from my dream and realized that this is not how things work. 
and my temperature system I created in my dream was absolute rubbish. So I did the most logical thing. I enslaved the robot to help me code in Godouche. And just like that, my temperature system still doesn't work because ChatGPT isn't great at coding. So I had to spend 25 entire minutes making a temperature system myself. Next up, I needed to work on some nice looking water. After 8 hours of staring at Sea of Thieves water, borrowing code from other people permanently, and binge watching tutorial videos, shout out to this amazing video, super useful, you should check it out. I ended up with something like this, which I think looks great. I even made it so that it's dark in the scary biome, brown in the volcano biome, and all swampy and gross in the swamp biome. I'd say it turned out pretty nice. But something's still missing. Hmm. Oh right, we need a default queue. No, that's not it. What we're really missing is trees and rocks and thingamajigs. Okay, this is too painful. I need a better way to do this. What do you think I did next? Did I get an environmental object placing plugin? Continue placing environmental objects manually? Or make my own system to easily place environmental objects down? The real answer is number four. I made a giant elaborate system where you have to plant trees and wait for them to slowly grow. If you think this system is slower than manually placing them, then you're wrong. Because I also made it so that the trees drop seeds themselves every now and then. And to make it realistic, the trees drop a single seed every two hours and the trees take three hours to grow. By the way, I also made it so that seeds can grow rocks. Because if you think about it super hard, it actually makes sense. The reason I did this isn't to torture my friend, although that is a bonus. No, I did this so I can proudly tell everyone I planted 1000 trees. Alright bro, you ready to plant some trees and save the earth? Absolutely. Okay, this is taking way too long. I'm just gonna leave my computer on overnight and let the trees plant themselves. I'm out. Good night, bro. Good nighty, forty nighty. Hey, it worked! We've got environmental objects in this biome. Now I just need to do the same thing for the entire rest of the island. Okay, I finally finished the entire island, but you're probably wondering where everything is. Well, apparently, the Godouche scene editor could not handle too many objects in it. So I can only have one biome loaded at a time in the editor, and we have to spawn them in during runtime. But once everything is done, I'll show the result of every biome, so stick around till the end of the video. Now let's make some grass. I got this grass plugin, but I'm pretty sure they didn't expect it to be used on an island this huge. So I had to build my own system to automatically generate multi-chunked grass multi-meshes. And now we've got grass. Now it's time to tweak the world environment and make it look nice. I might have finished the world environment, but something's still missing. Fog. I made it so that it shows different fog when you enter different biomes, but it doesn't feel right. So what I'm gonna have to do is get a splat map image of the island's biomes. Put the splat map image in this magic fog volume shader and tweak some values and now we've got fog. I even added a fog wind system to make it look fancier. But then I looked at a dark biome and thought, you know what would be really cool? Flashing lightning in the clouds. So I added a little something to the fog shader that gives the dark biome fog cool lightning and this is the result. And honestly, I'd say it looks pretty awesome. Now it was time to improve the lighting with some god rays. The usual way to add god rays in Godouche is with volumetric fog. But since we're already using fog for other things, it looks like we're gonna have to use some kind of shader technology. With some coding magic, we managed to create this for the god rays. But this has some very strange lighting problems. So we switched to an environment compositor effect, which is a new Godot 4.3 thing, and now god rays are done. I think that wraps up the environment. Now let's check out the final result for every biome, complete with environmental objects.
And that should be it for this devlog. Next time we'll actually work on getting the game in code done, since we've got most of the graphics out of the way. And make sure to smash that like and subscribe button, because I just programmed an immortal snail that's coming for you. If it touches you, you die. The only way to stop it is by subscribing. Live or die, Michael. Make your choice.